Back at the grandeur of the glass house at Wisley, I'm reminded of the huge diversity of plant life we can grow in our homes. Anyone that thinks house plants are boring clearly hasn't been here. I'm meeting the glass house team manager, Peter Jones, to find out which plants he thinks should take centre stage in my revival. So, Peter, why do you think we need to revive our love of house plants? I think it's just so important to have something green in our lives. I think it's just healthy for, like, as a human spirit to have that extra bit of life quality in our living spaces. And what plants, being surrounded by such a diverse range of plants here, what plants do you recommend as being relatively easy to grow? Well, perhaps a good group of plants which should be mentioned and brought more into the forefront is, say, um, Tillandsias and the epiphytes. And Peter, these are commonly called air plants, yeah. aren't they? These kind of wonderful plants here survive off the moisture in the air, so they would be living on uh, trees in, in the rainforest or where there'd be high humidity, but we can take those kind of adaptations and have them in our living space. So something like this... You would mounted be... them on your cork oak bit of bark there. Exactly. Something quite nice and interesting that you could have in your bathroom. And, I mean, look at the diversity in shapes that you can get. Look at this. You've got flower amazing great coming out of that. red flower spike. I think that's something that people shouldn't be afraid of trying in their home. Peter, I can see why you so love air plants. They're so diverse, aren't they? But for me, as a child, I've been interested especially in the cacti, and your collection here is mind-boggling. Cacti are crucial players in my revival, and there's an incredible range with over 1,500 species. In the wild, some are capable of growing as tall as a five-storey building. These awe-inspiring plants can survive in some of the world's most inhospitable conditions, so your front room should be no problem. I mean, the one we've got here, one of the Puntia microdaisies, isn't it? One oh, of the yeah, microdaisies. Yeah. They're just fantastic, quite spiny, these little glocked hairs here, but so easy to propagate. I know, and you've got to be so careful with those spines, because once they stick in, they don't want to pull out their barb, so they can be quite pesky. Hence the bit of newspaper here. I mean, what I love about them, look, in just, what, 30 seconds, a bit extra just to allow for not getting spiked with a bit of newspaper here, plucking them in there putting it on this end where I've made the cut here. It's calloused over a little, so it's dried a bit. And carefully, right, Peter? In the centre, is that right? Yeah, Rough yeah, in the centre of the pot. In it goes like that, right? Three inches in the compost there, something like that. Exactly, and it'll produce some roots. And before you know it, it'll start forming new pads just on the top of that. It's important to keep the moisture completely dry. Exactly. You're not watering at all, are you? You're not watering at all, because at this stage, it hasn't got any roots, it's got no way of taking up any moisture. The only thing that could possibly happen is that water would sit there, and then so you want to leave it as dry as possible. Be perfect.